Hey there, today I'm going to show you how to deploy a Nest.js application using Docker and Kubernetes. So we're going to Dockerize a Nest.js application and then use it to deploy it into a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and we're going to use Google Cloud Engine to be able to actually deploy this into a production environment. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to use the Nest CLI to generate a new project and I'm going to call it Nest.js K8s. Uh, which stands for Kubernetes here. So let's go ahead and actually scaffold this with NPM and wait for the project to initialize. So once we've finished installing the dependencies, we can CD into our app folder and then run NPM run start dev to start the app up. And then you can go ahead and open up the app in a code editor of your choice. Uh, and so we just have a basic Nest.js server running here with our app controller with our simple uh, get route here. Uh, and just to make sure everything is running up, okay, I'll open up Postman, and we should be able to make a request to localhost port 3000 and see the return hello world from our get route. So the first step in uh, deploying this application to a Kubernetes cluster is building it into a Docker image. So to do, in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and create a Docker file here. And this Docker file is essentially a formula or a set of instructions for how to build our application uh, in any environment. So to get started, we're going to use the from keyword here to base our image off of Node Alpine, which is a lightweight Linux distribution that will include Node out of the box, which is what we're going to need to run the app. And then we're going to make sure we label this stage of the build as development. This is going to be a multi-stage build and we'll see why in a second here. So now that we are extending this node Alpine image, we're going to specify the working directory for our app. In this case, it's going to be user source app. So now that we have a working directory, all subsequent commands will be relative to this directory. So now what I want to do is I want to copy using the copy keyword and I want to copy all of our package.json files. So in this case, it'll be the package and the package lock. I want to copy that into the root directory, which is currently our working directory. And now that we've moved the package.json over, I want to run npm install to install all of our dependencies. Now, once we have all of our dependencies available, we're going to go ahead and copy the entire application. So all of our files that we currently have, we're going to move them into our working directory. And then lastly, we're going to run npm run build to actually build the Nest.js application. So now we've actually built the Nest.js app. We're going to go ahead and declare the next stage of our build process here. So we're still going to extend the node Alpine image, but we're going to label this stage as production. And these labels can be anything you'd like. It's just to separate out the different build stages. So next we're going to set an arg here, and this is going to be the node environment. So this will, this arg here is just scoped to this Docker file. So to actually pass it to our build process, we're going to pass the env keyword and then specify the node env is equal to, well, the arg that we just defined, node env, which will of course be production. And now we're going to go ahead and actually just copy the working directory command from up here. We want the same working directory for this new build stage. So every time we declare a new build stage, all of the previous commands uh, are no longer relevant. So we need to redeclare the working directory. Additionally, we're going to copy over our package.json just as we've done up here. And now we're going to run npm install again as we did before, but now we're only going to install the core dependencies in our package.json. We don't want to install any of the dev dependencies. And we used these dev dependencies to build the application in the first place, but we don't need them necessarily when we run the app. So we can specify that we only want these core dependencies that are required by the app when it runs. And the reason we do this is to keep our image as light as possible. So after we've installed the dependencies required to run the app, we can copy over all the files as we've done before. And lastly, this most crucial stage is we are going to copy from development the first stage of our process here. We're going to copy over user source app dist. So remember up here when we run ran the build command, this outputted the, the Nest.js application to our working directory user source app and then dist. So we want to copy that dist folder over to our current 
working directory in the production build stage. So now we have the Nest.js application built and only the dependencies required to run it. We can finally specify the command to execute and run the app, which in this case will be node. And then we can specify disk slash main, which is the file that is executed to start the Nest.js application. So these are all the steps required to package our Nest.js application into a Docker file. And now we can actually use it in a Kubernetes environment. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. So to set up our Kubernetes cluster, uh, first off, make sure that you actually have a cluster available. Uh, so if you're using Docker desktop, it actually comes with the ability to start up a Kubernetes cluster. You just need to go into your settings for Docker desktop, Kubernetes, and make sure you've enabled Kubernetes, which will start a single node cluster. So once your Kubernetes server is running, we should be able to run kubectl get namespaces and see uh, your default namespace. Uh, which means we're ready to actually work with Kubernetes. So let's go back into our code editor and I'm going to create a new folder here called K8s, uh, which will host all of our Kubernetes related manifests. So the first thing we're going to need to create is a deployment, which describes to Kubernetes uh, the application we want to create. Now we're just going to supply some default fields here. The API version uh, will be apps v1, the kind, will be a deployment. So a deployment will ensure that we always have the specified number of replicas of pods running, which are, are essentially instances of our application. So we're now going to specify some metadata here uh, and just provide the name of this manifest. So we'll call it Nest.js K8s. And now we will add the actual spec here. So we need to provide a selector for the deployment to tell it to match uh, the pods that we're going to end up creating. So we're going to have a match label here and we're going to match the label app. We're going to call this nest.js uh, And now we can actually specify the replicas. So this is the number of instances we want of our application running. So in this case, we'll just do two. And then we provide the actual template for the pod that will be running. So now we'll provide this set of metadata on here and we will give it a label. So now this is the label that our deployment will match. So we wanna have the same label here so that our deployment is correctly matching this uh, pod, which actually will run our Nest.js container. So now that we've specified the metadata, we'll have the spec of the actual pod and we'll specify the containers that will be running here. So we're only gonna have one container. We can give it any name. I'll stick with our Nest.js K8s pattern. And now we're going to specify the name of the image that we're going to run. Now I'm going to call this mgue uh, nest.js k8s. And we're going to see how we can actually deploy this image in a second here. But let's go ahead and finish by adding a port. So we know our nest.js application is running on port 3000. So we need to expose that port uh, in the pod that's running. So we can specify a container port and give it a port of 3000. So now we have the manifest to actually create our pods or instances of our application. We need a way to actually build the Docker image we specified and use it here in this manifest. So in order to push our image to a central repository, you can create a free Docker hub account. Uh, so go hub.docker.com, go ahead and create an account. Uh, and then once you've done that, we can hit the create repository button. Uh, and then this is where we specify the account name. So my username was mgue, and then you can give the repository a name, whatever name you'd like. I just call it nest.js k8s, uh, and then go ahead and create this repository. So after you've gone ahead and created that repository, you want to make sure you've actually logged in. Uh, on the command line so you can use docker login and enter your credentials that you used when you created your docker hub account so now that we have a docker hub account and a place to actually push our image up to we need to actually go ahead and build it so we can use docker build give it a tag name okay and this is going to be the name of the repository that we just created so in my case it's mgue uh, you would replace this with your repository name and then the name that you gave the repository so i use nestjs k8s and then the path to where the Docker file lives. So in this case, it's a relative path. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and just build this Docker image. So you can notice here, uh, Docker is actually going through each of the steps we specified in our Docker file. And it's building 
our application so that it can run it inside of a container. Now it's important to know that Docker actually is gonna cache each one of these individual steps. So uh, it'll be quicker uh, next time we run this because it does implement caching on each one of these steps. Now after we finished uh, building the Docker image, we're gonna run Docker push and then specify the name that we just specified in the tag. So uh, I'm gonna push this to the repo that I've created, mgui nest.js k8s, and then go ahead and wait until all your layers are finished pushing to the repository. So now that our Docker image is pushed up to the Docker Hub repository, this image here that we specified in our deployment will correctly pull from the repository we specify. By default, Kubernetes will use the Docker Hub repository so it knows to match this with the repository that we created. Now let's go ahead and actually deploy our application locally. We're going to CD into the K8s folder we created, and then we can use kubectl create and then specify the file. So in this case, deployment.yaml. So actually, after we create the deployment, we can run kubectl get pods, and we can see our two replicas here are running locally. So we can uh, use kubectl logs and then paste the name of the pod, and we can see our Nest.js application logs are outputted here. So now we've created our pods, we need a way to communicate with them. And to do that, we're gonna create a service. And what a service does is it will uh, give us a IP address that we can use, and then it will load balance each request to a given pod that is running the container that we want. So in the case folder, we'll create a service.yaml file. We're gonna specify another API version here, v1. I'll give it a kind of service. We'll specify the metadata here. And as we've done before, we'll give it a name. I'll call this nest.js case as we have been doing. And now we have the spec here. So I'm gonna give this a selector. So this is going to tell the service which deployment uh, we want to target when a request comes in. So in our case, we gave our deployment a name of app nest.js k8s. So let's go ahead and specify that selector here so that our request is routed properly. Now that we've done this, we need to specify the ports that our service will listen on. Uh, the protocol here will be TCP. And we of course know that the port that we want to target is port 3000 which is where our Nest.js application is listening for requests. Lastly, we're gonna specify the type here, and this is going to be a node port. A node port uh, will open up this service for requests on each node in our cluster. In this case, we only have a one node cluster, this local machine I'm running Kubernetes on, but in a real cluster, this will allow us uh, to use any node IP address to communicate to our application. So let's go ahead and open up the terminal again, and we'll do kubectl create, and then we'll pass the service.yaml. We then should be able to run kubectl get service and see our nest.js k8 service here, type node port. So if we've set everything up correctly, we should be able to open a Postman and execute a request on localhost. And we're gonna use the port specified here. Uh, this will be different for you. This port here is the node port we wanna talk to. So if we execute uh, this get request, we can see our hello world response from our Nest.js application, which is great. So now that we've successfully deployed this application locally using a Kubernetes cluster, we wanna actually deploy this on the cloud so we can uh, use this API in the real world and in production. So in order to accomplish this, uh, we're gonna use Google Kubernetes Engine, which is a Kubernetes provider, uh, a really good one, easy to use. Uh, and new customers actually get up to $300 in free credits. So you can totally try this out completely free and see how it works. If you're not logged in, you should see a try free button here. Otherwise, you can go straight to your console. So after you've created or signed into a Google Cloud account, head inside the console and you can click up here to select a project uh, or create a new one if you don't have one already. So I've created one called Nest.js K8s and that's the one we'll be using here. Now after that, we can search for the Kubernetes engine uh, project, and this is what we want here. So uh, if this is your first time with Kubernetes Engine, you'll just want to click the blue button that says enable this API and wait for it to become enabled. After that, uh, we can see this page here where we select to create a cluster, uh, and we want to use the autopilot cluster option, which will automatically scale uh, and configure our cluster for us. So go ahead and click GKE autopilot and configure that cluster. 
Now we can have some options where we have specify the name and the region and make sure this is a public cluster. So after that, we can click create and Google Cloud will automatically begin provisioning our cluster for us. Now this is gonna take a little bit of time for the cluster to finish becoming provisioned. Uh, and in the meantime, we wanna make sure we have the Google Cloud SDK installed on our machine so that we can communicate with the cluster. So I'll include a link to these docs in the description uh, where it describes how to install Google Cloud SDK if you don't already have it. Essentially, we need a supported version of Python on our machine. And then there are instructions here based on your operating system. So in my case, I had the Mac OS 64-bit. We simply need to install the package and then move it into your user's directory, your home directory, uh, open up and unzip this file. And from there, we just need to run these scripts specified. So this install script, and lastly, we'll run the init script here. So after you have done that, you should be able to open up your terminal and run gcloud. So while this is still provisioning, we should be able to still connect to the cluster. We can click on the name of the cluster here, and then we wanna click on the connect button up here and get this command for command line access so that we can use the kubectl command in our cluster. So simply, we're just gonna copy this command specified and paste it into our terminal here. And this command will automatically update our cube config to use this newly created cluster. So once our cluster is fully provisioned and we see the green check mark, we can go back to our command line here and run kubectl get namespaces. And we should see our newly created namespace three minutes ago. Uh, and we won't have any pods in our default namespace, which makes sense. Uh, and so now we're gonna go ahead and deploy our Kubernetes manifests. However, there's one small change that we wanna make to be able to deploy uh, our service here. Now, we don't wanna use a node port, but we actually wanna take advantage of Google Cloud's load balancer features. So if we specify a load balancer as the type of the service here, Google Cloud will automatically provision us an external URL that we can use to make requests to our service, which is exactly what we want to communicate to our app. So with this small change, we can now run kubectl create file and then just provide our whole directory here. And we should uh, see our deployment and our service get created properly. Now, if we wait a little bit of time for our pods to get provisioned, we should be able to see our two Nest.js pods running properly. And if you run kubectl get service, we should see our load balancer service. Now, notice we have an external IP provisioned here. And this is what we're gonna to use to actually make a request to our application. So go ahead and copy this external IP address and we can actually use the target port here to talk to this service. So if we open up Postman and enter our external IP and give it the uh, port of 3000 and send off this request, we can see if we get a hello world response back from our Nest.js application, which is great to see our app has been successfully deployed in a production Kubernetes environment. So that's all for this one. And if you have any questions or problems setting this up, please let me know in the comments, leave a like, and be sure to subscribe for the next one.